Hey there, welcome to The Hot Slice, weekly podcast brought to you by Pizza Today magazine. I am your host, Jeremy White, editor-in-chief of Pizza Today, joined today by the one and only smiling, happy, fresh off of vacation, Denise Greer. Oh, uh, hello, Jeremy. So I will tell you, I did just fresh off vacation, but I did ride my bike from Cleveland to Cincinnati. And I'm going to tell you, I did stop at pizzerias along the way. And one yeah. thing I have to say about small town pizzerias in Ohio, y'all need to raise your prices. <laughs> um, and I'll say that because I stopped at two. Uh, okay, so I craved spaghetti and meatballs, not pizza on my trip because yeah. I was riding so much and needed pasta. And Eat those carbs. Yeah, so I got an order of spaghetti and meatballs and it came with a huge big thing of garlic bread and a salad and a drink. Guess how much it was? Spaghetti and meatballs, garlic bread, salad, drink, small town Ohio, $9.99. $7.99. Good Lord. And this, I had it two different times at two different pizzerias, the same price. Wow. I was amazed. I was like, you know, uh, the funny thing was, so I got a really good meal for the same price as I could order fast food. So... Uh, so I'm just throwing that out there because, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really something that's happening in small town pizzerias that they're keeping their prices the same, but they're inflicting, they're getting inflicted with a lot of price increases that they're just taking the hit. And I just don't think that they can continue to keep taking the hit and taking the hit, especially as labor goes up, as inflation's going up. Like it just, I, I just don't want to see them suffer. It's not sustainable. We've been pounding that drum for months now. Hopefully people will begin to listen yeah. in a way. Yeah. And so a couple other things happening right now. We've got pp and &E registration, Pizza and Pasta Northeast in Atlantic City. It's that registration is open. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, go to pizzadata.com. We have a link direct to the registration. Um, what else is going on, Jeremy? I, don't, I, I think we can jump well, right into what this, this podcast is about. Hey, before we do that, though, let's talk about the Be Counted campaign. Oh, yes. Pizza Today magazine. If you turn to page eight, you'll see a little teaser there. Um, but we are conducting, as we speak, extensive pizza industry research. We are going to put out a report at the end of this year that is going to leave no stone unturned, right? And Absolutely. Uh, we want you, as a pizzeria owner and operator listening and watching this right now, we want you to stand up and be counted, have your voice heard, and help us put together this detailed, comprehensive report that, Denise, you are, you are spearheading. So talk about that just a little bit. Okay, well, right now we're in the phase that we are uh, collecting uh, emails and making sure that we have everything lined up as far as the survey goes. So part of it's going to be survey. The other thing is finding trends, finding research to help operators, uh, you know, maneuver through what's currently happening. We're asking a lot of hard questions, and I think the yeah. industry is going to like that we're asking those hard questions because we're going to get a consensus on where the industry is at, and, and these things haven't been done in a long time in our industry. Uh, you know, right down to some of the um, topping trends and mm -hmm. uh, menu trends, like uh, th this is gonna be pretty extensive. Uh, and I think that if, uh, if you make sure, that, A, make sure that we have your email address so that we can uh, send you this questionnaire uh, and make sure you stay on social media, you look to your email, you look to your social, on when we um, when we get this survey distributed because we want as many people involved with this survey as possible because we want an mm -hmm. accurate gauge of the pizzeria market. It is detailed. It's going to take probably eight to ten minutes to fill out, which mm -hmm. you know is in today's short attention spans. That's it's not a quick hit. Yeah, but can't go really deep if you don't ask the number and the types of questions that we're asking in the survey. Absolutely, and I, I know our industry, you know, the one thing is we have an industry that does share information. We have an industry that wants to help each other and wants to know what's happening with everyone else. And so I really think that we're gonna get some great responses and we're gonna have a really good gauge 
of what's happening in today's pizzerias, right down mm -hmm. to their economic outlook, menu, marketing, um, some general ops types of things. Yeah. Um, so, you know, look to pizzatoday.com uh, coming up and to your socials and emails because it's, it's going to be coming down the pipe very soon. Yeah, so really help us help you is what we're saying. Absolutely. That's so great. moving on. Who's moving our on. Guest? So, well, I'm going to show you who our guest is. Our guest is Tara Hatton from Zaza's Pizza and Wings in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Tara is our cover for Pizza Today for our Rising Stars in the Pizzeria Industry feature. Uh, and we could not pick, have picked a better cover for, uh, for the Rising Stars. She has been in the industry uh, basically since she could work, I think, Jeremy. And uh, so she's actually a veteran in the industry young, uh, has been with, uh, was with Andalini's for a very long time and then branched out on her own to have her own pizzeria. And now she has a second location. Uh, so she is a go-getter, a uh, self-described workaholic. Um, and she just, uh, she knows what she's doing, Jeremy. She does. Uh, first, let me take a step back. I love the cover. I so love this cover. Let me throw out some appreciation for us having a Nirvana t-shirt on the cover. As a huge Nirvana fan, yeah, oh. I love it. I yes, love it. the Nirvana shirt. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Tara, um, you know, she, look, and let, she's learned from the best. Um, Mike Bausch, Indolini's, one of my dearest friends in the, in the pizza industry, knows his stuff inside and out. Um, Tara's been able to work alongside Mount, uh, Mike for a number of years, and Mike recognized something special in Tara. He's like, Tara, you need, you need to own your own pizzeria. You need to get out there and, and, and do your own thing because you're special. And um, Tara is, like you said, she is absolutely killing it. She's got her yeah. second look. She's... Um, She's just slaying it. There, there's no other way to describe to describe it. She is one of many rising stars in the pizza mm -hmm. industry. Uh, we took we identified a handful of rising yeah. stars, um, wrote about them in this issue that, that you just held up for people to see. Yeah. So definitely check that out when the July. issue hit, hits your inbox, which is going to be in any day now within the next yeah. few days. You're going to have this issue in your hands and see read all about Tara and the other rising stars. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and we just selected a handful of people, uh, you know, as we, and I will tell you, Jeremy and I sought, um, sought out other operators to ask them, you know, who, who's rising and the amount of people we had come through. Uh, it, it's exciting to see so many new names that I can't wait yeah. to talk to and, and find out even more about their successes because as we research folks, uh, there are so many people that are just killing it. Like you said, they are just doing so well. Yeah, you know, we, we poured through this extensive list. We had about 65 names that were recommended to us mm -hmm. from some really heavy hitters in the industry. We whittled it down to, I believe, seven, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. off the top of my head, correct? We, yes. we published seven, um, which means we left out a lot of great people due to, you know, space constraints, time constraints, the mm -hmm. sort of... Uh, obstacles you deal with when you publish a magazine. However, to those people who don't even know who they are, because they were <laughs> given to us anonymously, their time's coming and they will also Absolutely. be given a lot of love in the future from us as well. These were just the seven that we selected right now at this, at this point in time. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, let's, uh, let's jump into why how Tara made this list because, uh, you know, she, she's just, she's so smart and she's just so talented. Uh, and let's just jump in and talk to her because I think everyone is going to like what she has to say. Yeah, let's get her on here. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. 
Hear that? That's the sound of a pizza being made with delicious Baccio cheese. For the past decade, Baccio has provided customers exceptional Italian pizza cheese with its signature kiss of buffalo milk. With a superior melt, endless stretch, and a rich, creamy taste beyond compare, Baccio is honored to celebrate this 10-year anniversary with all of its partners. Schedule a demonstration at BaccioCheese.com slash hot slice to learn more. Pizza's your legacy. Build it with Baccio. So, first off, Tara, I know you've seen this because I, I watched a video, by the way. Um, oh, but... oh, no, you saw the video. <laughs> I did the see video the video. Was amazing. But this right here is one of my favorite covers of Pizza Today. You look Thank amazing, you. <laughs> and you are one of the rising stars, and you're on the cover. You're also the youngest Congrats. rising star in the group. So Ooh. congratulations on congratulations, being Tara. on the cover of Pizza Today magazine. Thank you. It's wild. I'm like, oh gosh, where I was at, and now I'm like on the cover, and I have two stores. I'm like, the past few years have been kind of wild, and like everything just yeah. earned in the best. So. Yeah. Well, let's kind of talk about that because, uh, you know, you've been in the business for a while and now you've kind of got your own footing and you're doing your own thing and you're now, you're now an operator. So yeah. congratulations. You know, what was that like to step into that role and where are you right now with your, with your restaurants? Um, I think I'm still like adjusting into that role, but mm -hmm. kind of the setup of restaurant we have, it's, it's, uh, not full service. So okay. it's just kind of like counter checkout and stuff. Just grab your stuff and sit down, which is great because I'm not, you know, managing servers and all this other stuff. Like I'm on the yeah. line making food and talking to customers when they're ringing in their stuff. And I love that part of my job that I get to do that because that's kind of, that's why I fell in love with the industry is I liked making pizza. <laughs> so yeah. when I'm not making pizza, I have my, my bad days where I'm like, I've Okay, it's been like a week. I haven't touched a pizza. I've been thrown dough. Uh, like I'm getting, I'm getting mad. I'm cranky. I'm like, just let me in the kitchen. Like I just want to feel all the tickets come in. I want to be rushed, and I want all the madness. And I still think that's hard. Um, I find myself just like being a kind of the line cook most of the time. I'm here, then I go home, and then I'm like up all night being an operator. And I'm like. Yeah. This is frustrating. I'm still not used to it. I'm, I don't like doing paperwork. I don't like doing desk stuff. And I'm yeah. like, oh. <laughs> so but. what's what's been like a highlight of being an you know, being making that switch from being uh, a pizza maker to a, a, to an operator? You know what what's something that you really love about the transition into it? I think it's that I get to make and sell literally whatever I want now. Yeah. And it can, especially with our concept, it's weird stuff. Like I, our best selling pizza is pickle pizza. So it's like people love you? coming in for just the random stuff that we make and put raviolis on pizza or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. So I think that's the fun part of it. And yeah. it wasn't up until we opened our most recent location because it's in a food hall. Mm -hmm. And so there's just all these restaurants, all these great concepts that are, it's their first brick and mortar. They're mainly like food trucks or um, they have this thing called Kitchen 66 to where like brand new people can just rent out this area, make stuff in there and sell it. And it's usually pretty crazy. But it was the fact that when we opened, I stood there in the kitchen and I'm watching all these people just fill up this massive building. And then them choosing to come to my location and come try my food and love trying my food versus everyone else. And I was like, I think this, that was like the, oh my gosh moment for me. And yeah. I was like, okay. I was like, I, I felt good about what I was doing at that point. Yeah. Well, you know. Tara, you know, let's uh, talk about pickles for a minute. You know, yeah. the debate had been, previously the date, the debate had been whether pineapple belongs on pizza. And now we're talking Pickles. pickles. John Budicants has written a great article on spoiler alert. On, yes. <laughs> spoiler alert on pickles that will be in an upcoming issue of Pizza Today. Um, I personally am a fan. I actually had a pickle yeah. pizza the other night, and my wife didn't like it. My boys didn't like it. <laughs> I loved it. What's your take on the pickle pizza? Tell me how you how do you make it? What's on it? So our pickle pizza is just an olive oil and garlic base, the cheese, mm -hmm. and then a crazy amount of uh, pickles. And then when it comes out of the oven, we put a garlic aioli and fresh dill on it. 
Ooh. And I think the aioli matches so well with the pickles. It kind of just like, it's almost like ranch, but you don't want to commit to the ranch part. Yeah. But I, I don't know what I tell customers when they come in, they're like, I, I get one or the other where people are like, oh my gosh. And they're super excited. Or I get people that are like, that's disgusting. Why are you putting it? Right. <laughs> and How does it sell? Um, I mean, it does really good. It was just, we put it up in the window because I saw people were making it. And literally like the first day we were open, I was like, I'm going to try it. And we made one. And uh, Jim Bausch, Mike's brother, was like, you put that on the menu. And he was like, that's that weird. Put that on the menu. And ever since then, that is, it's been like our staple of like why people come to visit us. Mm -hmm. And what I always tell people, I'm like, it's like pineapple on pizza for the first time. Like people looked at everyone like they were crazy when they put pineapples on pizza. And now it's just the same thing. It's, it's sweet, it's crunchy, but it's more salty. So it's kind yeah. of the same thing. It's just evolution of weird pizza toppings. <laughs> yeah. It, that's I, what, what is great about running your own pizzeria. As you alluded to earlier, um, you can just sit there and make the snap decision. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to put this on the menu. If you were, um, you know, say a franchisee of a large chain, you may not have that freedom um, yeah. necessarily, but you can just wake up one day and think, I'm going to try this and put it on your menu that day. And that's really, really liberating. It gives you a lot of opportunities to experiment until you, you know, find what works. Yeah. And you, can't, you became a pizzeria operator a very kind of volatile time in our industry yeah. because you're right before um, the, the pandemic, correct? Or just after the pandemic? It, I mean, we've been open for like eight months. So mm -hmm. kind of like in the midst of everything. Yeah. I mean, Oklahoma was kind of weird. We were like the yeah. last state to like close everything and like the first state to open everything back up. Yeah. So that was difficult because it was, I think like two weeks before we opened and we're like, okay, we're opening. I'm like, I have no employees. I'm like, how am I going to get people? Like, everyone's hurting for employees. No one wants to come back to work. And it was, thankfully, me just hitting up people that I had worked with in the industry for years. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing? You want, you want to come make pizza? And that's some, pretty much all my employees are people wow. that I've worked with for the past several years. And that's kind of, that's also great because they're all experienced pizza makers and they're just learning a different style of pizza. Mm hmm but the cost and everything and certain things, yeah, it was hard. I mean, open up a chicken wing place in the <laughs> yeah. middle of the pandemic. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it was insane. I'm like, I'm finally like starting to come back down on the wing prices. So it's like, yeah. okay, this isn't so bad. <laughs> and so when the regular wings were not available, did you go to those jumbo ones or the really small ones? Like, how did so, you do it? Or did you go to tenders? We sell boneless wings yep. um, that we purchased because I mean we couldn't really make a better one consistently than we yeah. could buy um, but we use we sell the jumbo wings so we literally okay. buy the biggest most expensive wings and I think they were like $170 when we first started for a case of wings and now they're at like 68 and I'm like oh, okay gosh that's, finally that's crazy so yeah, I mean we knew that was gonna happen but where have your supplies gone now? Because we keep hearing about all the price increases on certain items. Um, are you are you seeing like things level out right now, or are you still seeing everything kind of go up as far as your supplies go? So we kind of have like I guess a weird situation when it comes to managing food costs. Mm -hmm. um, so I operate still some of my stuff like cheese and dough they make out of the Andalini's commissary oh, kitchen. Yeah. And then they deliver to us. Um, so we do all of our like transfer stuff through Market Man. And for a while, the prices weren't really updated on there. So I mean, uh, the stores were in favor, but not our prep kitchen. Um, but now they kind of adjusted everything and it went up for a really long time. We were like, this is not manageable by any means. But um, yeah. a lot of that factored into, uh, we had a cheese contract with Roma and us not doing that anymore allowed us to drop prices on everything else getting mm -hmm. rid of that contract so everything else has went down significantly other than cheese now we actually cheese. pay for cheese yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but i mean i think it's been a good thing because i mean you can manage cheese pretty to the t when you have a restaurant but yeah. everything else is just kind of like fluctuating a little bit yeah, yeah. How about employees what do you uh 
where are you at right now with employees? I know you're able to get a lot of friends in the industry to come work for you, uh, especially with opening that second, that second spot, uh, you know, where are you be able to be uh, fully staffed? Yeah. Um, so what we did, um, we, I took over the Andalini's that was in Mother Road Market because mm-hmm. um, they have one that was so close to it also. So they couldn't really do to goes without having to expand yeah. the whole menu to compare, but then it just kind of takes away from the other location. Yeah. So they were like, hey, like, this is a great opportunity. Like, put yourself in here, get your name out, you know, mm-hmm. uh, put yourself out to another part of Tulsa and everything else. And I was like, yeah, I mean, most definitely. And then we could deliver, do DoorDash and everything to yeah. everyone in that area and grow. Cause, I mean, when we talk about the concept and idea of Zaza's, we are like, we want like five or six more locations in the next few years. Mm-hmm. And not realizing what that looks like is like every <laughs> like six months, you're like building out and starting the process. But oh, wow. I think it gets easier each time. I mean, I've opened like seven restaurants, I think yeah. now. So now it's yeah, just you're like, a pro. <laughs> You're an opening pro. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, it's fine. We're just used to all the fires. It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) So what have you learned about opening opening so many spots? Like, what have you learned that you've been able to take into, you know, uh, into that next, into that next opening? Um, it's kind of hard to say, because most of the time, I'm just kind of like a helping hand every time we've opened another Andalini's mm-hmm. or remodeled or rebranded yeah. or anything like that. I've kind of been there and like helped be a part of that. Yeah. It's not like I had to, I just kind of wanted to. And yeah. I get bored when I'm bored. I'm like, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go make pizza. Or something. <laughs> and usually you're, you're in the right business. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, it's, I'm a workaholic. It's gross, but <laughs> Right um, business. <laughs> I think it's just being like open-minded because I mean I go in there and I know it's not my store and I'm not the managers and I'm not yeah. running it so it's like I give them my opinion and it's just like that's the whole process is everyone just yeah. bouncing ideas back and forth to make that location specific and successful yeah and so when you did your uh Zaza's your second uh what what was that comparably to opening up your first It was way easier because, I mean, we had employees. It was just like, hey, this is how you make this. This is how you make that. And Mm -hmm. I think it was like two days we turned it over. And they're closed on uh, Mondays, like that whole building. So uh, Sunday, we like went through and we're like, what do we need to order? What do we need to get Mm -hmm. rid of to the other stores? Monday, Mm -hmm. we went in there and moved everything. And then Uh put in different ovens and fryers and stuff. And then Tuesday we opened up and we were like, all right, let's go. And let's go. Yeah. First people who walked through the door, it was like a bus of kids that were coming up there. And I was like, oh no, this is, this is about to hit. This is crazy. And we ended up having, I think like almost 200 tickets just like that morning for lunch. And I was like, it's like, this is nice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So what are you looking forward to with your business? With uh, where, where would you like to, you know, you said you wanted to add more units. What else would you like to do with your, uh, with your business? Um, I think just being like more comfortable in it. I think because of the pandemic and everything, we did rush in a lot of aspects mm-hmm. and there was a lot more thought that could have been put into some of our recipes. And that's something I'm still struggling with now is like, changing out completely my pizza sauce and certain things in the process and the dough when people either like it or they really don't like it and it's I don't want to upset those people who love our pizza by changing it but I just I think it could be better and I don't want it to just be meh and then sell it because yeah it's not not the point but (laughs) what kind of experimenting are you doing with your dough I'm just I'm always curious about that because I like to geek out on that I know Jeremy likes to geek out on that too Uh, yeah (laughs) You want to talk for hours if you get me started on this. <laughs> well, I'm not going to give away our whole dough, no, 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 I no. guess, here, but um, we have been, like, putting malt in our dough, which mm-hmm. isn't something I'm really Gives familiar with. It's a nice with. color. Yeah, I'm yeah. not really familiar with that, but that's something we've been working on, and it makes just, like, the whole process of how I know dough to age, like, completely different. Yeah. And then us using 40-ounce dough balls for our 20 mm. French pizza. Wow. Like, it's, they're big dough balls. <laughs> they, they big. 
let's talk about storage with uh, 40, you know, 40 ounce dough balls. Uh, yeah. Do you have enough storage, do you have enough refrigeration for that amount of dough balls? <laughs> yeah, I mean, thankfully we just do it like for our slices. We don't really uh -huh. sell our 24 inch pizzas because when you mm hand -hmm. it out, it's like a 50 something dollar pizza and it's like, yeah. oh, who's really going to want to buy that? I'm like, I they're would. fine for totally. fine. Like, <laughs> I would too if it was that big, but people don't realize it. And they get the pizza and they're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, like, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right for sure. We have a spot here that I order, and you uh, you get this big, huge pizza, and it doesn't fit in your door, and you have to like yeah. angle it to get the box <laughs> in the door. I love that. That's my favorite to order. <laughs> yep. And then you get home, and you're like, the box doesn't fit in the refrigerator. Like, no, nope, exactly. Just like fold the box and put it in. There. <laughs> That's how it works. So some people may know you from the world pizza games because you are a Absolutely. champion you know i love you it are. and this last year you you kind of rocked it and kind of dominated a lot of things um <laughs> and even the year before that uh, 21 21 was a good year for you at the world pizza games yeah um, what what are you planning you got things in line for next year what are you doing um i mean i'm still i need to practice more in the acro i was kind of surprised i got as far as i did because of uh -huh. such a little amount of practice i did have uh -huh. I had foot surgery and I wasn't even like walking up until oh. like a few weeks before Vegas. So wow. I was like, oh gosh. And then the year before that, I had a fractured hand, mm -hmm. which from doing pizza tricks, just kind of <laughs> embarrassing. I, I passed out. That was I, the handstands, wasn't it? Yep. yep. <laughs> I did a handstand and I do them all the time and I didn't think about it. And I was kind of punched the floor and I was like, Oh, that hurt. And I kind of just sat there for a second. And I went You're to walk like, away and I was like, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to pass out. I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, gosh. It's like someone's going to find me laying on my living room floor and they're going to be like, what happened? I'm like, it was just yeah. pizza bricks. It was fine. <laughs> no big deal. Now, are you bringing anybody else into the fold at Zaza's to, to do that competing for, for the restaurant as well? Are you bringing other people into the fold to learn? I mean, I honestly haven't thought about it because how crazy yeah. it's been, but I need to. That'd be pretty epic. So we've always kind of brought in more and more Andos people with me. And I'm like, well, yeah. we need to start training some Zaza's people because, I don't know, it'd just be cool to have more of my guys out there and support them and yeah, get ourselves out there too in the process. It'd be cool. Um, I am wanting to like focus more in baking because I kind mm -hmm. of, I always just do traditional Neapolitan. Yeah. Which, you know, margarita pizza, cause my mindset's like, if I can't perfect the basic of pizza, then I probably yeah. shouldn't be, like, competing in anything else, yeah. but now, I'm like, I'm just gonna do it, it's fine. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. You know, no, I you love, oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Fine, I just love, it's fine, that seems to be Tara's mantra here, it's just, <laughs> it's, like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> we're, we're gonna, we're gonna make it work, we're gonna figure it out, I'm just gonna work my tail off, and make things happen, and if there's some bumps along the way, it's fine. <laughs> and that's how you have to get through the business world, Terrence. So you are rocking it. I love it. You are doing I, it. And I you, love it. you competed in IPC too. You competed in the pizza challenge this yeah. year, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, so you, I think I have like all but like my first year at Pizza X. Yeah. So I've competed in IPC. In my PC as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, you know, because, because you have, you have, you've applied so much creativity. What's, what are you wanting to uh, infuse into your menu uh, coming up? I'm always interested in what, you know, you got the pickles in there already. What's something that you want to infuse into there uh, next? We're trying to work on desserts now because we have like nothing really sweet on our menu. Yeah. And I don't know. There's so many, I don't want to put something that's too labor intensive on my guys right now mm -hmm. on yeah. top of everything else. So I'm kind of stuck in the middle of what to do that kind of sits, like suits us and it's weird that we mm -hmm. can switch up so I think that's been kind of difficult and I don't want to do something really just like oh here's some like some cannolis or something yeah. or I want to do something weird and out of the box and just trying yeah. to find what that is has been kind of difficult yeah I, my favorite is the customized ice cream sandwiches I swear I saw it when I, I experienced it in New York I was just like at the meatball shop that's <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. I just I love that it's my favorite dessert because I, I can customize it for myself and it has cookies so I can get chocolate chip cookies and ice cream in it so yes I'm a big dessert vein too I, I've got a sweet tooth so now historically as I'm sure you're well desserts 
normally don't comprise a large percentage of sales in a pizzeria setting, yeah. but I'm a sucker for the, for the fine finish at the end, if it's nice and sweet. Yeah. So what you're experimenting with, what are you leaning towards right now in that regard? Um, we were thinking about like, cause we're prepping all the stuff at our Bixby location for uh, our mother road market location right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So finding something that we could like make and ship over to them. And we were kind of thinking about like, just taking a sheet pan and make like a cookie brownie and yeah. do like different toppings or something on it, depending on like the season. But mm -hmm. it's That's gotta cool. be a really good cookie and brownie, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Insane chocolate is what I'm saying. But, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, I eat pizza and I'm around like greasy food all day. I'm like, my go-to usually is like, I just want sweets at the end of the day. I'm, yeah. like, I don't want real food. I like it. And they're great things for the counter. Like, I, I don't think enough people take their desserts, single wrap them, and put them at the counter. Because that impulse, I, oh, yeah. I have never passed up that impulse of being able to grab a brownie or a chocolate chip cookie or even a rice. I saw somebody had Rice Krispie treats one day at their counter, and I was like, ah, oh, I got to have that. I just yeah. <laughs> So there's all those carry out orders be like, I've got to have it all. <laughs> Hopefully. So, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll close out on this. Okay. We've, we've got you on the cover and this is actually dropping. Let's see here. This is going to be a day before it drops online. So people will be getting this in the next week. Uh, so you'll probably get some calls maybe <laughs> from people <laughs> congratulating you. Um, you know, um, what kind of advice do you have for, uh, you know, maybe people listening that that are wanting to follow in your footsteps? Maybe they're pizza makers or maybe they're just not in the business yet and they're wanting to, um, you know, to step in and and become an operator. You know, what what advice do you have for them as somebody who's, you know, recently just uh, dove in? Um, I think just definitely working, working, working. And yeah. every time I felt like, I had hit that wall and I was like, oh, well, why am I doing all this work? Like, what am I getting out of it? Like, I, this is definitely like a giving industry. Like every time I worked, I saw the results of it. And every night I stayed up late or every time I threw dough all day for no reason, like I saw the results in that and I continue to. And I think that's why I love the pizza industry so much too, is because I see the results of my hard work and there's nothing better than that. And I mean, you don't feel like a failure at the end of the day. You have happy people. You're making pizza. I mean, putting smiles on faces, phone dough. So it's like, mm -hmm. I think it's definitely worth just keep trying. I love that. That's awesome. What a, great, what a great way to end, end the podcast is on such a, with such a positive and awesome note. Denise, yeah. keep trying. It's fine. Keep trying. Keep trying. It's fine. <laughs> we have but, a uh, great market. <laughs> Well, we can't wait to follow you and your career because we can't wait to see where it goes and, and how you develop and, uh, and and how many stores you end up opening. Uh, right. uh, can, you know, just keep at it and uh, and we can't wait to watch. <laughs> <laughs>